Hello guys again. So let's work this funny problem here. And I say funny because usually when the students see these letters here, they start freaking out. And I mean, you don't have reasons to freak out. This is the same thing that we have been doing and that you have been doing for some time now. So let's read the problem first. It says determine the length of the triangular load. So I don't know how much is the length of the triangular load. And I don't know the length of the rectangular load. But I know two very important things. I know that the equivalent resultant force is zero. And also the moment is eight kilonewton clockwise. The first thing that you do, as always, whenever you have a system of equations like this, a system of equations, I mean, a distributed load, I'm already solving the problem. When, whenever you have these uh, type of loads, you have to convert the distributed load in a concentrated, equivalent concentrated load, which is just the area of the shape. And in this case, the area is a triangle. So it's going to be B times 6 or 6 times B divided by 2, which is 3B. And you do the same thing here with this one. It's just the area of the rectangle. And this distance will be B plus A or A plus B. And this height is 2, so this will be 2 times A plus B. So now the, those are the only two forces acting here, and we know the resultant force is 0. So if the resultant force is 0, then I have my first equation using the first constraint. Negative 3B plus 2 times A plus B has to be 0. And when I solve this, I have negative 3B plus 2b is negative 1b, so I have 2a minus b equals 0, and I call this equation 1. Now the second equation, I get it from the resultant moment. Notice that it's a couple moment, and it's a resultant moment, and it doesn't specify with respect to any point, because the, the load is 0, the resultant force is 0. It doesn't matter from what point do you take the moment and it has to be 8 kilonewton clockwise. If you do it with respect to this end, it's going to be longer, but you can do it, and I challenge you to do that. So let's find the location of the forces. I know that in a triangle, the location of the concentrated load is going to be one-third of the base from the right angle. So this distance is B, one-third of B. It would be that. And for the rectangle, it's at the center. So from this end or from this end, it's going to be half of the base, a plus b divided by 2. That's going to be the distance. So if you say the resultant moment with respect to a has to be equal to 8, because the problem is saying that, then we can do moment with respect to this point. And please do it. So I need the distance from here to there. The force is 3B and is causing a clockwise moment because I can do that, right? Multiply by the distance. This distance will be the total, which is 4 minus 1 third of B. And it's positive. Now for this one, the value of the force is 2A plus B. And the distance will be the same. I mean, 4 minus a plus b divided by 2. And now it's going to be clockwise, counterclockwise, and I say clockwise is positive, so it's going to be negative. Now you can solve for this equation, but I'm going to show you something easier. Do that, and you should get the same result. I'm going to do moment with respect to here. And it has to be 8, because the problem states that. Now, why would respect, oh, I don't have any label there, but now I do. I'm going to do moment with respect to B. And it has to be 8 positive or clockwise. Why I'm doing it with respect to this point? Because I realize that distances are easier. They don't have this 4 minus here. It's just from this point. So I'm going to do that. The value of the force is 3B multiply by one-third of B. 
Now keep in mind this, if I do moment with respect to this point, this is coming in this way, like that, counterclockwise. And I say clockwise is positive, so that has to be negative. And this one is going to be positive. The value of the force is 2a plus b. And the distance is going to be a plus b divided by 2. Now I can solve this. You're going to solve that and compare, but I'm going to do this. It's going to be equal to this and this cancel out, so it's going to be minus b squared. Then I have here these two and these two cancel out. And then I have a squared. This is just a square binomial square, so a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this b squared and this b is negative b squared change, uh, cancel each other out, so I pass the a to the other side. And I have a squared plus 2ab minus 8 equal 0. There you go. And this is my equation 2. Now I have to solve this system of equations. I can use several approaches, but the easiest one in this case will be substitution, in my opinion. So you can solve here for b, and say b is equal to 2a. And then I'm going to substitute that into this b here. Then I will have a squared plus 2a multiplied by 2a, which is b, minus 8 equals 0. And then what do you get? You get a squared plus 4, a squared minus 8 equals 0, and then 5a squared equals 8, a equals, or a squared equals 8 over 5, and then you can calculate a and A will be A divided by 5, 1.6 square root, 1.26. Of course, whenever you have a square root, that could be positive or negative. Now, keep in mind that the negative value is not possible. It's an absolute value. So, 1.26 meters. And now if we want to solve for b, it's easier that I use that equation and I say b equals 2a, substituting this in or plugging this into equation 1. So that means that b is going to be 2 times 1.26 and b equals 2.52, but actually it's not 2.52 because this number is, I don't know why I'm putting 126 if I never do that. I like to put four decimals, so 1.2649 meters. If I multiply that two times uh, two times a and a is 1.2649, b will be equals to 2.5298 meters. There you go. Calculate it, A and B, short problem. Now, please, please, try this one so you can see that it becomes a little bit more complex to solve, but the result has to be the same. Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Keep watching, keep learning.